Okay, I mentioned there's going to be two versions of my Shetty review. Here's mine, so I'm going to go into a little bit more detail. Okay, as I mentioned, there's a nude scene before the opening credits. Machete and his partner are going to take on the, uh, the, the, the main Mexican drug lord. Try to find this missing girl. His partner gets shot up. He goes on a minor killing spree to get the girl. Goes to the room and she's naked. He looks at her and goes, put some clothes on. It's too hot for clothes. Fine. He carries her around naked. She double crosses him. And then pulls a cell phone out of her hoo-ha. They don't show her pulling the cell phone out of her hoo-ha. It's not like that. But they do all the sound effects of her pulling the cell phone out of her hoo-ha. And then she gets shot. And then they cut off the head of Machete's wife. And they leave him for dead. That's when he's first left for dead. Then you go through the opening credit sequence. Yeah, so you've already had, like, people being shot up, hands being cut off, you know, probably about a half dozen decapitations in, like, one motion. He gets surrounded by guys, he just does, like, a spinny move with, the, with his blade, cuts off all of their heads. So, right off the bat, you kind of know what you're in for. Pretty much. You know, then comes the main meat of the story where he gets, you know, hires a day laborer to shoot the senator, gets double crossed. You know, that 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 probably ends up being like the whole the whole main like meat of the story starts from right there. Now you're probably thinking, since I said nudity before, the following people do not have nude scenes. Lindsay Lohan. What they do is they use the footage that was used uh, in the fake trailer. Jessica Alba. Uh, Michelle Rodriguez. Or Danny Trejo. I'm sorry, Shumasi Trejo naked. He's not naked in this movie. So. You do get, like, a side shot of Alba. I don't know exactly what she's doing. I'm assuming she's in the shower because it's running water. But then it would have meant that she left her computer running Machete's ID sitting in another room just by itself. So as I mentioned, before, I mentioned the, uh, the safe for work one. Machete does get the women. Yes, he gets the senator's wife and a senator. You know, he gets the senator's assistant's wife and daughter. Because the daughter, Lindsay Lohan, who is I guess um, I guess a meth addict, films naked things on the internet and gets her mother involved in one of her um, online trysts and ends up being with Machete who knocks them out with, like, some strong tequila. And then essentially drops them off with his brother. His brother's Chief Baron, who's also, like, the town priest. If you see the trailer, you know most of his sequences. You know. So, they're naked for quite a lot of the movie. Actually, they're naked for the scene in the pool, when they get drugged, so they're in the back of a hearse, and then when they wake up. So you have those nude scenes, and then the woman in the very beginning, who pulls the cell phone out of her hoo-ha. So it really doesn't have, you know, like, graphic... I mean, there, there are a lot worse. If you were to see, like, a Friday the 13th movie, there's a lot more nudity in that than there is in this movie. And there's a decent amount of violence. And some of the violence is kind of over-the-top hilarious. You know, the network, which is what they call all people who help out the illegal immigrants... They take Machete in, and you know they start doing a, uh, you know, why is it Machete? And they start you know trying to help him out a little bit, and they realize that the people who hired him, the guy's assistant, is sending other people to kill him at the hospital. So he takes a skull saw and a bunch of scalpels, ties the scalpels onto a nurse's belt. The nurses are played by the crazy babysitter twins from the Grindhouse movies. And he begins to, like, cut people up. Now, the scene before that, before he fights in the hallway, they mention that, you know, the intestine is 60 feet long. So, of course, he needs to leave a building. He guts the dude, grabs his intestines, and then jumps out the window, using the intestines to swing from one floor into the other floor. When I say not taking yourself seriously, this does not take itself seriously. You know, that's him, I said, just keeping in the hospital, you know, trying to do little minor things here and there. 
Michelle Rodriguez plays she, or Luce. She makes tacos. Again, this is this is exploitation. You know, almost all the Hispanic people they show up tend to be illegals. Almost all of them, you know, are like day laborers and whatnot, or people who sell tacos. You know, she's essentially trying to get people armed to take on Don Johnson's Minuteman vigilante group, who essentially shoots illegal immigrants uh, trying to cross the border. So in a private he shoots her in the stomach, and then does a little spiel about, you know, if she gives birth, if she gives birth to that thing in our property, it becomes citizens like you and me. So it does have some level of non-political correctness, but I would assume people who actually patrol the border willing to shoot people, not just detain them and have the authorities remove them, would probably be fairly racist. Now, on to some of the violence. Machete tends to not really like guns. He likes to cut people. A lot. Whether it's broken glass, a machete, knives, scalpels, skull saw. You know, he doesn't use guns very much in this movie. Now, there is the scene, of course, where he does slap the minigun onto the motorcycle as he flies in the air and shoots everybody. That part's done fairly well. All in all, you know, beyond, beyond some of the sex, yeah, Machete, beyond having the, uh, the center assistant's uh, wife and daughter, he also, Michelle Rodriguez knows that he is Machete. And there's the implied sex scene that they have. And Jessica Alba does get drunk and asks Machete to lay with her. When she wakes up, it's kind of confident. She's like, she's checking her clothes. And then she goes down to her hoo-ha. I don't know what she was checking to see. And she's like, oh, he's a real gentleman. Later on, when she gives him his papers, which he doesn't care for because he's Machete and he his newspapers. He's fine being a, a fake person because he's a myth. Then they kind of make it on the motorcycle as they ride up in the sunset. So, you know, I've met Danny Trejo. Nice guy. Being somebody who went to San Quentin when San Quentin was like the seventh layer of hell. You know, and I'll be honest, this was actually this was a really good movie. I know it's going to get trashed a lot because it does seem fairly nonsensical. I mean, I saw Crank 2. Crank 2 had a lot more nudity, a lot more bizarre violence, and a lot more inco incoherent plot lines. This one. Here is your plot. They labor. Turned on by the senator's assistant because he wants to have an illegal shoot at the senator to get him reelected. Works. Okay, that, that, that's a fairly decent plot. The Minutemen are friends of the center, and essentially he helps arm them to help kind of defend the border. Okay. The Mexican drug dealer in the beginning of the movie, that's Steven Seagal, is the one who's actually financing the senator. He's helping get some of the weapons to the Minutemen, and he's also working with the senator's assistant. Trying to get on the network. And here's the main reason why. They want to build an electrified fence, which when they show the graphic, it's hilarious. The electrified fence with certain strategic weak points. Weak points that Seagal's character will take advantage of by shipping drugs through those weak points. Why? Because the senator's assistant wants to essentially have a decent control over the Mexican drug trade. Porous border, too many drugs coming through, prices go down. This is the speech he's giving as he's crucifying Chief's merit. If you put a fence up, which will be built by the illegal immigrants without pay, and then they'll be pushed on the other side of it. That's very much of it. Oh, I'm going to play. Oh, let's see. The, uh, Carlos Mencia. When he had made that joke about having Mexicans build the wall, but have them be on the Mexico side of it, and then be like, all right, guys, you're done. Oh, man, we're the wrong side of the stats, Holmes. You know, that, that was kind of thrown in there. But using the idea of enforcing... Of, of, of enforcing a strict anti-immigration policy 
anti-illegal immigration policy specifically to help control the drug trade to increase the amount of profits you get on your high-grade drugs. Wow. While using a mock military force as well as a senator and political power. That, that's actually a fairly a fairly robust storyline and a fairly robust idea for, for a movie of this caliber, which is designed to be, to be exploitation. But it gets pulled off, it gets pulled off well. So the reason why this is the, the not safe for work version is because I do mention, you know, the sex scenes and the woman pulling herself out of her hoo-ha. Now, if we can just get Thanksgiving made, we'd be all set from the Grindhouse movies. I, I could almost see it. They do mention, like, sequels, because it's Grindhouse style, you know, Machete Kills, and Machete Kills Again. Could I see them doing another movie like this? Yeah. I could see maybe once every couple of years you kick out a movie that's just entirely geared straight towards guys. But the plot works. It's not politically correct, but it's highly political. Which is actually kind of bizarre and done well. Knowing movies of this caliber, the plot is just entirely over the, all, all over the map, and it's stupid. Plot? Not that bad. 